Coastal Survivors listening today, we want you to know that Friends is here and there are agencies like ours all across the state that are ready to believe and support you. We also want survivors to know that the systems are working to ensure that we make laws and policies that support survivors. For if we strive to meet the needs of the most marginalized individuals, we will all be served. So again, I would like to welcome Governor Evers. Very, these are two very important bills, and you can tell by the number of people that are in the room. So, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here today to recognize the incredibly important legislation that we're, we're looking at today and signing, and what it means for our state, and more importantly, what it means for victims and survivors of sexual assault. First of all, I'd like to thank Kate Nickel and uh, everyone at Friends Inc. for hosting us today and for the critical support and resources that you provide for individuals for the West Bend community. So thank you very much. I'd also like to recognize a hardworking group of bipartisan legislators, and there's a bunch here uh, to, uh, to, to talk about that and to be recognized, uh, <coughs> whose efforts have seen these important bills over the finish line, including Senator uh, Agard, who is with, also with us today, has been a lead on this for several, several years. Also, like to thank Attorney General Josh Call and all our partners at the Department of Justice for your continued support for this legislation and advocacy for, of justice for victims and survivors of sexual assault. Unfortunately, we all know too well the challenge the Department of Justice is up against, working through a backlog of assault kits uh, that went neglected for too long, denying victims and survivors of swift justice. The bills I'm signing today take several critical steps forward in helping to ensure justice is not delayed or denied by creating a process with increased transparency and accountability in the state's testing process for kits. First, Senate Bill 71 establishes a statutory procedure for collecting and submitting sexual assaults in the state crime labs and for, for, for processing and retention of those kits. I introduced a similar uh, a, a position, a proposal in my 2023 budget, and it's a proposal that legislators have been working on for years, and so I'm glad it's going to become law today. Also be signing Senate Bill 94, creating a tracking system for sexual assault kits, which will enable survivors to access information about the status of their kits as it moves through the criminal justice process. And that's important because that's a sort of transparency and accountability that empowers survivors as they work through the justice system, which can often be challenging and absolutely traumatizing. Victims and survivors of sexual assault have already gone through the unimaginable, and their path to justice should not be delayed or uh, obstructed. So I'm glad to sign these bills today. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Attorney General Josh Paul. Josh, see if we can get through here. Um, thank you so much, Governor Evers. Thank you to everybody who is here today. Um, I think it's particularly fitting that we're doing this uh, at a victim services provider. Um, one of the um, real honors I have as Attorney General is to meet with a number of the people who are part of our criminal justice system, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, and also victim advocates. Um, and what I can tell you about victim advocates in Wisconsin is that they are compassionate, uh, they are knowledgeable, they are hardworking, and they are fierce. They are fierce advocates for survivors. And because of the work that they do, survivors across the state of Wisconsin get the kind of support that they need, not only to help them with the healing process after violent crimes, but also to help them navigate our complex criminal justice system, and they help ensure that we get justice in our cases. So it's, it's great to be here. Um, I also specifically want to thank the members of the Attorney General's Sexual Assault Response Team, um, many of whom are here, as well as uh, our folks at the Wisconsin Department of Justice. Um, passing significant Bipartisan legislation is not easy, um, but because of the work of so many of the subject matter experts who we have had assisting in the development of this legislation, um, we were able to prepare legislation 
that is now becoming law and that is going to make a big difference in people's lives. And that is because of the subject matter expertise and the knowledge that so many people brought to this. So, so thank you to all of you. This accomplishment is, is your accomplishment. Um, thank you to the legislators who worked very hard to pass these bills. Um, it's a privilege to be here with you as these are getting signed into laws. Um, Wisconsin, for years, had a backlog of untested sexual assault kits that accumulated over decades, in fact. Um, those kits were stored in police agencies or in hospitals and were never submitted to the state crime labs for testing. There were uh, about 6,800 untested kits that were identified. And over the course of several years, uh, the Wisconsin Department of Justice, both under the prior AG and then concluding under me, worked to test uh, kits that were identified for testing within that backlog. And in November of 2019, we announced that testing had been completed on those kits. Um, now, we are still in the process of following up on cases where foreign DNA was identified. As a result of the follow-up work that's being done, uh, several people have been charged with crimes. Uh, some people have been convicted of, of very serious crimes. Uh, I'll talk about one of those cases in, in just a moment. Um, but we need to make sure that there is never another backlog of untested sexual assault kits in Wisconsin again. And the two bills that are being signed today are going to help make sure that that never happens. And what that means is that justice will be more certain for survivors of sexual assault. And it means that we can be more confident that violent criminals who commit sexual assault will be held accountable, making our communities safer. And that's what this bill is about. It's about making communities in Wisconsin safer and getting justice for survivors. And if you want the clearest example of how this makes a difference, there's a case, actually two cases pending right now, in Racine and Kenosha County of a person whose DNA matched to multiple different sexual assault kits. He's been charged in three separate counts, uh, three separate cases of, of sexual assault. He had been on the street. He had not been arrested until those kits were tested and follow-up happened. That's the kind of power that testing this evidence has. Um, it is not easy to bring a bipartisan group together. Uh, it is easy to be cynical uh, about the state of our politics. Um, but this bill is one that is going to make our community safer, and so it is such a privilege to see a bipartisan group of legislators coming together to get this accomplished, and it's a privilege to be joining Governor Evers today as he signs it into law. So thank you to all of you who worked hard to get this bill passed. This is a really significant moment for survivors, and it's a significant moment for public safety. Thank you. With that, let me turn it over to Senator Agar. Thank you, Governor Evers and Attorney General Call. I am thrilled to be joined here with a few legislative colleagues that I would like to recognize, Representative Vining um, and Representative Thiesfeld. Um, Representative Thiesfeld was instrumental in helping this bill cross um, the finish line with his work uh, with Senator Coles and Senator Darling, um, who are not here. I um, am Senator Melissa Agard. I represent the 16th district um, here in the great state of Wisconsin. And I am just ecstatic that we, after so many years, are able to be here today with Governor Evers as he turns these policies into the law for the state of Wisconsin. The passage of Senate Bill 71 and Senate Bill 94 and the bill signing today are a huge win for survivors across the state of Wisconsin. And it is important that we realize the hard work that went into making today possible so that we can codify these laws um, in our state. It is long overdue and today what we are doing is promising to deliver support and protection for survivors of sexual violence in the state of Wisconsin that was not there and is not there until these bills are signed. These procedures are going to uphold the dignity of survivors and victims across the state of Wisconsin. It will uphold the dignity of choice and the rights to fair and just processes, protecting those who choose not to report at the time of assault and allow people time to change their minds. For survivors across the state of Wisconsin, we see you. We have heard you. We honor your experiences. We honor your history. And we're going to continue to work with you, to support you, and to move forward. 
I know that while today is a celebratory day, there is still a lot of work that we need to do in Wisconsin for our survivors. And I am going to carry the stories of so many people that have shared with me um, every day in the work that I do to make sure that we continue to complete the work that needs to be happen, that needs to happen. We're celebrating the work that needs, that needs to be done and that has gotten us done to be here today. And we're reminded of the important work that needs to happen as well. We're celebrating bipartisanship. We're celebrating those of us who have worked so together over many years to create this needed change in the state of Wisconsin. And we're celebrating the fact that we can actually put our partisanship aside and get together in gritty ways to deliberate and cooperate and agree on problems and solve problems for ordinary people across our state. That's why we're here. And that, at the end of the day, is why we're elected. So again, I want to thank the amazing group of legislators in the Capitol building who have prioritized this on their agendas. I want to thank um, Attorney General Schimmel and Attorney General Call for the work out of their office, for Governor Evers for making this a priority um, even before day one, this was something that he committed um, to working tirelessly on to address. And here we are, crossing the finish line today. Survivors in Wisconsin are finally going to have a process that honors their dignity and provides supports to them that are so vitally important. We will ensure the state of Wisconsin that we are never going to find ourselves in the situation that the Attorney General talked about with over 6,000 kits untested without systems and processes set forward. Um, so in summary, I am so proud to be standing here today after years and years of hard work. And I am so proud to tell those who have endured these horrible crimes, who have shared their stories, and those who are not at a place where they can share their stories yet, that you have helped us get to this point. You are the brave ones, and we are here bringing your stories forward. And we are committed to continuing to solve these problems. And this is just one step in the process. There is more to do. So today we celebrate. And tomorrow, we roll up our sleeves and we continue our work. Because that's what survivors need us to do in Wisconsin. Thank you. So I'll now sign 71 and 94 Senate bill. Thanks, everybody. Good work. Thank you. All the over the hill that I can't see, but thank, thank everybody in this room. Obviously, any time we have a bipartisan result in the legislature or in the executive branch, that is good news. The, um, and we, um, but especially on something as important as this. I mean, there, there, are, there are bills and then there are bills, and this is one that's been uh, really very difficult just because of the, 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 the importance it is for the, the, the people that are suffering under these circumstances and, uh, and the backlog that existed, but it is now with everybody's help, uh, we're in a much better place. So I just thank you all. And pass out a few pens if I can find the drawer here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can somebody help me with handing them out? Oh. <laughs> you always have a bunch here. I do this personally, but I'd have to start throwing them to get them to people. 
Questions? The uh, Republicans in Waukesha County, maybe elsewhere, are asking to move John Chisholm from the Milwaukee County DA. Any thoughts? I haven't seen the letter. Uh, as soon as I receive a, a letter, as per state law, to uh, begin that process, uh, we would begin it, but it has to be somebody from the county. Uh, is, is that a possibility, Governor? Would you consider removing him? I, there's a process that we follow. I mean, it, it's just like any other DA that we may have removed or considered it in the past. Uh, once we receive a complaint uh, from someone from that county, we start the process. Do you think he should resign based I, on what you know? We have a process. We have a process. Simple. I get a letter from somebody from the county requesting that process be initiated. I will initiate it. Governor Milwaukee County today is saying it's seen um, a record number of hospitalizations, COVID related, at least in 2021. Um, curious your latest briefing on the new variant and if the state has any plans for any type of hospital surge that, that may be coming. Well, we're always in constant communication with our healthcare partners and the hospitals uh, across the state of Wisconsin. We meet daily and, uh, and we're monitoring the situation. Clearly, that's one of the, you know, besides the, the impact of this pandemic on, on people's personal health and, uh, and in some cases death, uh, we, we are also concerned about the overload on our hospitals and so we are we are in constant communication around that. We have made no decisions yet. With the Omicron uh, variant confirmed in the state, what's your message to, to the state, and, and are you concerned about the new variant? I'm concerned about the I'm concerned about the virus. Period. You know, the new new variant that we're learning about it on a on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, what we do know is that the present vaccines are effective. In, uh, in preventing this from happening and, and or to make the, uh, make the recovery much easier. So the, the, answers, the answers to deal with this are right in front of us. They're called vaccines. They work and I'm, we're gonna continue to encourage people to get vaccinated. Governor, there's some new reporting from uh, some Republicans this morning are considering ideas of potential constitutional amendment proposals on election laws. Curious your response to that. They, they say it would be a go around to your authority. Your response to that, and, and what would your reaction be if legislature started moving this? Well, I'd be disappointed. I mean, we have a system that works. It's worked for the last uh, five years since the Republicans uh, created the system that we're working in now. So, I I would say that's an over uh, that's an overreach. We, we have a system that works. Let's uh, let's move on. Reaction, yes, reaction from you or the Attorney General about uh, Justice Gableman's uh, performance, you might call it, at the uh, hearing last week, his yelling and et cetera. I, I wasn't there, so I can't respond to uh, anybody yelling at, at any situation. All I know is we have we have a safe and secure election. It's over. We have a good process in place. Let's move on. I don't know if you have anything else to add, Josh. Governor, all three of you referenced the bipartisan nature of mm -hmm. this event here today and, mm -hmm. and these bills. How rare is this this day and age? Well, you'd be surprised. It's not rare, <laughs> and, and most uh, legislators around around me know that. We do actually agree on things. I sign many bills every every session, and uh, this this one is especially important because of the hard work that's gone on for su such a long time by all of the legislators here and the importance it is to the, to the survivors uh, of sexual assault. And so, yes, it does happen. Would, would we all like to have it happen more often? Hell yes. Would we like to have it happen in a way that uh, people aren't um, denigrating each other? Hell yes. But uh, the fact of the matter is we do accomplish a lot in many areas. Last question here. 
took you six years after the backlog was discovered to pass this legislation. What would you say to the people who have been waiting for six years for a solution to this problem? Well, and I'll, I'll let Josh weigh in also, but uh, of course we wish we had, would have had this uh, taken care of a long time ago. Uh, and, you know, before was before, now is now, and we, we worked hard. These legislators that are here today worked more than, you know, the last, uh, last session on this. It's been something that's been ongoing for several years. So obviously, we would we would have wished to have this situation taken care of at an earlier earlier point in time. Yeah, th thanks for the question. We, as I said in my remarks, we need to make sure that Wisconsin never has a backlog again. And one of the things that has happened since the backlog was discovered is that there's been a lot of analysis done by uh, several of the folks in this room to identify exactly what led to the backlog and how we can prevent it from, from ever happening again. Um, but this has been a, a priority of mine since, the, the, in fact, before I was sworn into office. So we've been fighting to get this legislation passed. Um, we had a strong bipartisan group. We were close in the last legislative session, uh, but this session we, we got there. And what this means is that going forward, um, as long as this remains in our, our statutes, um, Wisconsinites will have critical statutory protections that will help prevent a backlog. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.